Yes, my peoples, it's T, and I'm back for The Apprentice reaction and review. So this week is The Apprentice interviews. My favorite episode of the entire series always is typically the interviews. So let's see if this one will be another favorite of mine. So I'm going to give my review and reaction to this slightly different. I'm going to just go through each candidate and give my thoughts and a bit of a reaction to what occurred in each interview. I think they each had um, three or four interviews. Um, and yeah, I'm going to just go through each candidate and give you my thoughts on what occurred. So, um, initially there was a bit of an intro to a few a few of the, the candidates this year. In fact, before we get started, I forgot to do my signature. Let's go. Let's get it. Let's go. All right, then. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, long story short, um, it started off with a bit of a little kind of a prelude to the interviews. Um, and and they started off with Rachel. So apparently Rachel is 27. I'm saying I'm not, I'm not saying anything more on that before I get cancelled. Um, <laughs> but she wants to, um, she, her idea is essentially a boutique fitness studio. Um, now, isn't that the same as the person who won it last year? Or maybe they didn't win or did she lose? But either way, there was a person last year in the finals who was had a similar idea, such as, um, I think it was a, a boxing gym, boxing gyms, basically same thing, it's the gym. Um, so, okay, cool. And then Trey, um, his little prelude was about him not never having a normal job, um, which is interesting. It's interesting to see see him now going into this field and trying to, try to go into this area, because um, obviously he cannot live off that one hit, albeit, a classic banger he can't live that one hit forever um also what is he actually doing um i didn't catch it in in, in the prelude paul honestly um yeah i don't know what he's doing either based on the prelude Flo, she has a recruitment business instant for me it's an instant no it's an instant no from me um like where's the one that won literally did a recruitment guy that won this show just a few years ago where's he um, so recruitment businesses, yeah, not not the one in my opinion. And Phil and his poor record, honestly, honestly, right now, based based on how I'm feeling at the start of this episode, I feel like he might win the whole thing, which is incredible to say because although I think he's very, very poor and he doesn't deserve to be here, um, pies are actually a decent kind of business idea. If I mean, it's not a business idea, but it's a decent business. Like people love buying pies in this country. Um, and it's something semi-different of recent years-ish for Lord Sugar. So maybe that explains why he's survived for so long. Um, strange. But to be fair, he's already said he's always had his plan in his head and he's never made a business plan before. So it's looking likely he might continue down the same vein of being very poor. Um, but anyway, on to the interviews. Um, also, why are the interviews not in the Gherkin building? Why is it in this, in this, in this? Anyway, it's not important. But, um, and another question is, how old is Linda Plant? In fact, I need to Google this right now. How old is Linda Plant? Because, again, I don't want to speak on a woman's age, but um, she looks like she's minimum 95. Minimum 95 years old. Um, so I'm Googling her right now. Oh, she is around 72 years old fair enough fair enough <laughs> fair enough okay um all right so anyway let's get back let's get back to the regular programming <laughs> um, apologies to any any linda fans or family that are watching this um she looks good for her age um she's she's still mobile active so that's good um i guess i guess it helps being a millionaire you can have all the best best health care and, and food um and claude claude is back claude is back good to see him looking well as well he was one of my favorite um people in the apprentice but yeah he had some recent health troubles so he's the last two seasons has been yeah in and out in and out in and out um anyway on to the interviews themselves so i'm gonna start off with trey so trey um something around a functional shot of testosterone or with Ginger and turmeric, I just, yeah, I, don't, I, I didn't really catch what his idea fully was. Um, but honestly, his business plan to me sounded very poor. He got ripped to shreds in the interviews. Um, he didn't include anything about distribution, anything about manufacturing. Um, 
Like, has he never seen a presence before? These are basic things that you include in any type of business plan. Basic. Um, and why do you keep talking about music? Like, in my music, I was great. In my music, I was this. In my music... F- fam, we don't care. <laughs> it doesn't. It's not the same. You can't automatically... Trans- Just because you're good in one area doesn't mean it automatically translates. Yes, there are transferable skills, but in, 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 in most things, but eh, no, you can't keep going back to, I was great in music or I was all good in music, so I'm, I'm going to be good here. It, no, you, you like it's a completely different ball park, different ball game, different product. Um, so I think he's out already. It's, it's, it's being awful from him. But Linda did give Trey a compliment. Um, he was very, she was very nice to him, which is quite rare because she's normally quite mean um, to everybody. So um, she was very nice about him as a person um, and his and his musical career as well. Um, but she doesn't like his actual business idea, which is fair because even I now don't understand it. Um, and he hasn't shown anything, anything at all. Like he has no, as he admits himself, he has zero experience in this field. Um, and there's not enough there for me for it to be really investable. So um, yeah, it's it's crazy that it's crazy that he hasn't, he's asking for a quarter of a milli of Alan Sugar's money and he hasn't even tasted his own product or manufactured his product. Like what is going on? I like the, um, I forgot his, na- his name, but I like that one of the interviewers, he always does this, he, he came prepared, he literally got his ingredients made up into a sample. Um, and yeah, he made it to a sample and Trey actually really liked the sample. I think maybe he, maybe he was faking it. He's like, yo, I like the, way, like, yo, this is nice. And the interview was like, yeah, that's a bit harsh for me. That's a bit harsh. And the way I was burning the back of my throat, pause. Um, yeah, it's a little bit, yeah, it's a little bit much, but to be fair, I've had one, I have, I've, I have had a similar turmeric type, um, you know, vitamin C, winter warmer type shot in the past um and that's how they do they do they do kind of bond the back of your throat um but yeah also what's with all these what's with all these sub stories like th- this lady's pulling out th- th- there's one lady who does she, just, she be fair she does it every year she just pulls out sub stories like making people cry like ask them about their business not their personal life like i un- like i understand in business you want to know you know the person behind the business too but yeah man I don't need all of this, all of this emotion, emotion. Um, anyway, that's Trey. In my opinion, not investable. But let's see what happens in the boardroom later on. Moving on to Paul. I don't have a lot, a lot to say about Paul. Um, his the business idea is around scrubs. It's around scrubs. Like what more? <laughs> like what is that really a business? It's just a little overall, really, but stain resistant and fireproof or something. <laughs> Scrubs like Linda was savage though to him. Um, she asked all the right pertinent questions and he missed all of the information about manufacturing again. The manufacturing, the business plan, everything is just poor. Like, how did these people actually even pass the screening and get onto the show in the first place? That's what I want to understand. How do these people actually get onto the show in the first place? Like, how do you pa- like could, could I apply and just be like, yo, I got a business with no proof that I have a business and no business plan? Um, and just get on the show for, for like for bands. I don't know because it's very strange. It's very strange. I thought there'd be some level of like screening to see who actually gets on the show based on if they have an actual investable business. I, yeah, strange. But yeah, honestly, Paul seems done out, <laughs> done out. But um, his second interview wasn't bad, but it wasn't great. Um, and Claude Claude was also quite nice to him. Um, yeah. But they're all saying the same thing about Paul, that his current business is his current business is great, investable, but his new business idea about the scrubs is not the one. So yeah, Paul may have a question um to ask himself there. Now moving on to flow. Ha <sighs> flow, 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 flow to me. I don't know why she reminds me of somebody. I I don't know, is it is it is it Catherine or Kate, whatever her name is, Princess Kate, Princess Catherine. If she reminds me of her. I don't know why, but anyway, um, off topic this, but her idea is some sort of recruitment business for senior finance pros to move into private equity. It sounds right up Flow Street to be fair, quite posh. Um, and I was very shocked, but she got a big compliment in her first interview, which I very rarely see this. It's the first time I've seen it in an interview ever where somebody has actually got a compliment on their business plan. Um, the guy, I keep forgetting his name, but the guy said, I love the structure of your business plan. I couldn't believe it. So good start for her until the name of the business thing like what is going on like that is basic like check your brand check the name 
check the copyrights, check if it exists anywhere else. You know, all these things are absolutely basic. I don't understand how you how you come on come on big big national TV apprentice watching all the previous seasons and you don't do these basic simple things. Don't get it. Um and her facial expressions, yo, listen. They was making me uncomfortable. There's there's just too much. She looked so uncomfortable. Like she was like I can't, I can't even do it. I can't even do it about looking like a fool. But yeah, listen, Flo was absolutely crumbling in her interview with Linda and she got destroyed by poor um, Claude. Um, but yeah, all her body movements and facial expressions were so mouse. I could tell she really wants this, but I'd, honestly, I never won. I think she's not ready for this either. Now, moving on to Phil, Philip. Handmade pies, we all know about this. He's a pie maker. We, from episode one, we knew he's a pie maker because he'd been very poor on every pie task. Um, as one of my commenters commented as well. Um, so he has five shops at the moment. Um, and I guess what? Someone who's running a business, something basic was missing from his his plan. He was missing a profit and loss. How can you come on big, big, asking for a quarter of a million on big, big national TV and you don't come with literally one of the most basic, simple things that you need in any business plan? Profit and loss. I want to know if I want to if I if I'm going to give you money. I need to know what are you making and what are you losing. I need to know this before I give you my money. See if you can see if I can trust you with my money. It's simple. I don't understand. Even someone in, not in business could understand that. That's simple things to include. I just don't get it. Um, <laughs> and I think Claude 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 is quite funny to be fair. Savage but funny. He was like, "Yo, listen, you gave me a a big you gave me a big and long business plan, yeah, with nothing in there. You had about fifty pages with just pictures on there. I don't care about pictures. I want to see data, <laughs> and it's so true." Um, and then, wow, listen, he got called out for lying. Man said his business was established in 1933, but he said it was actually established somewhere in the 2000s and something. That's a big difference. Like he's literally, in my opinion, he's ruined his business reputation on national TV. I don't understand. It's ridiculous. He has to change all the shops right now, but either, either way still. But yeah, on a plus point, he's got almost a million pound in the bank. Congratulations to him, but he's not close enough to the accounts, which is quite poor. Like, how can you not see your accounts as a business owner for over six months? Crazy. Like, Phil looks like he's, you know, like fairly young-ish, but he, he's moving like he's archaic, moving like he's 95, um, just like Linda looks. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let me go back, let me go back. Um, but yeah, no need, listen, listen, listen. Phil, as normal, doesn't know what he's doing at all. Like, why did he come here? But what I don't understand and what I don't like here is what was the need for the cheese, the cheesy conversations and the music, Phil talking about his family. And now I know I may I may seem like I'm being cold hearted here, but that was for me. The, the way they put on a little soft violins and music in the background, like fam, what's the business saying? No one cares about how he feels about family. We all love our family. I want to know what is, what is his business saying? <laughs> like, I feel like they're setting him up to go to the final with this soft, soft story. I just, yeah, it's, it's just, it, seems, it feels a bit like dramatic and scripted to me. Ridiculous. Anyway. Um, yeah. So next, next person I'm going to talk about and the final person to talk about is Rachel. Um, Rachel has been, for me, fairly consistent throughout the entire series, to be fair. She hasn't been like mega tested. Um, but she hasn't really put a foot wrong, in my opinion. Um, and her interviews wasn't actually too bad. Um, just the branding was scrutinised, which can be adjusted quite easily. Because the branding was quite bland, to be fair. Um, Claude also said she didn't provide the accounts, which, again, basic, basic. And um, to, start up, to start up her first branch, she spent 150 grand of her own money. Must be nice. <laughs> Must be nice. But she messed up with the numbers. Um, so no one can tell. What is she actually making and losing? We don't know. Um, and then wow, she didn't even buy the she didn't even buy the domains, like simple. And the thing is, they weren't even that expensive. They was cheap. It was literally thirty pound for two domains. So it's so cheap. Like why didn't she just secure them? Secure the domains. Like some domains go for literally thousands, thousands. So the fact that hers cost thirty pound for two, to secure them, simple. I print that, that apprentice guy was very nice to buy it for her essentially and then sell it back to her for cheap. It's just, yeah, it's like, again, they're clearly trying to set her up to go to the final because why did they just buy her domains and give it to her? Interesting. There was very nice to her in the boardroom, in the, sorry, in interviews. But anyway, moving on to the boardroom. I'm going to get straight into the results essentially almost because there's not really much for me to say because everything has already been said. Um, 
But two things I will mention is one, Karen, very cheeky, saying no thanks to Trey singing that was that felt like a bit shade a bit shady there i'm not sure why she's like no thanks <laughs> don't want to hear you sing please I'm like okay fair enough um man sold half a million records like come on respect his thing um and then paul he's gonna have to change direction as well he's gonna have to change direction um because his business that he wants to investment in no one wants that no one needs that may as well lead now but let's go to the results so the results are as follows the first one out was Trey. That makes perfect sense to me. Honestly, his business, there was, there was no foundations there. He didn't have any idea what he was really doing or talking about or experiencing it. He just kept trying to say, yo, I do music. I was good in that. I'm going to be good in this. You can't ask for a quarter of a million on just maybes and who knows. And yeah, it still don't work. So Trey, see ya. Next was Flo. Gal like Catherine. Um, Flo was <laughs> kicked out pretty swiftly as well. Her numbers were silly. She was trying to, she was trying to just, she was, she was just trying to move too fast. And in business, you can do that and you may succeed if you, if you're lucky, if you do the right thing. But most of the time, yeah, you're playing with fire. If you try to just build too quickly, you're gonna end up. If you don't, if you have one month where you don't perform well, and the, and the number and the money ain't coming in, you're you're screwed. So. Just trying to move too quickly with silly numbers and to be fair and, re and recruitment ain't the one anyway uh, especially in this economic climate where jobs are just few and far between um i know she's going into more of a niche area but yeah she did she did try to to save her, herself though but her face changed when when Andrew was like listen you're fired her face looked she looked like she was about to cry literally tears but fair enough so after those two were gone it was down to a final three rachel Paul, who hasn't even got a business plan, um, and Phil. Um, those are the last three. So who did Lord Alan Sugar decide should go in the final? Well, what did I say? What did I say? What did I say? Phil gets to the final. They've been setting this up for since episode one, I swear down. But today, they, in the interviews, clearly with all the little violin and stuff, they set it up. Paul's, Paul's in the finals I don't understand I don't understand how but what I do love about this is that I love that Paul sorry, sorry Phil sorry Phil's in the final but I love the fact that Paul stood his ground Paul was like you know what I don't sure wants to give me money for my current business my current dentistry quarter of a million 50-50 partnership but I love the fact that he stood on business and he was like you know what listen not all money is good money I am out you're not taking 50% of what I've already built sorry see ya <laughs> so i love the fact that paul the done that stood his ground st st stood on his morals and like nope it's out and that automatically basically gave phil and rachel a pass to the final um honestly how has phil managed to swing this he's phil has must be the worst candidate ever um and he's <laughs> and he just got to the, the final um lock is going earth and you know what i'm gonna give my predictions i'm gonna give my predictions for the final next week so my prediction i'm gonna i'm gonna say I don't fully believe this, but I'm going to say it because something seems to be happening. I think Phil's going to win the whole thing, which is going to be an absolute insane and travesty. But I think Phil's going to win the whole thing um, because it just feels like it's all set up for him to win for some reason. I don't understand why. I just don't understand why. Um, but I feel like Alan Sugar likes pies. <laughs> I feel like Alan Sugar likes pies. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> so let's see how they do on next week's final task and who they choose to be on each team as well because that's going to be very important but i feel like if phil does if phil doesn't do bad in his final task i think he's won if rachel and phil have quite similar outcomes in their final task then i think it's going to swing to phil but if phil does really badly in, in his final task which is very very possible because he's been poor the whole the whole series then rachel made us automatically take it i don't know but i'm pretty certain alan sugar already invested in a fitness element literally last series um, unless I'm being mistaken but yeah anyway that is my thoughts my reaction let me hear your thoughts in the comments let me hear who you think who you think should have got to the final in the comments and let me also hear who you think is going to win the final next week in the comments so next week will be my final video on Apprentice and I'm going to be honest it's probably my final video ever on YouTube as well potentially but um yeah 
It's been real. Thank you for listening. If you made it this far, you're a real one. Peace.